<laughs> We're still poor. Amen. Do y'all hear me? Amen. Only way you're going to get richness is in, is in Christ. Christ. Amen. It's not in stuff. Once you buy one thing, you like me. You ready to take it back. Right. And while I hate condo, because I'm not going to have it for two months, I'm ready to stop paying for it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, I'm ready to take it back. Because yes, I don't want to pay no more. Yes, and I feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm wasting my money. Come on, Pastor Tommy. You better tell it now. Come on now. I'm just telling you the truth. Tell it. Tell it. Y'all got to understand, we can't just go around and waste all our resources right. on stuff. Trying to make somebody else look bad. Right. Or somebody else think great, think we are better than they are, or right. we are greater than they are. Right. Mm. Right. Mm. Do y'all hear me now? Amen. When we grew up, we borrowed sugar, salt, and everything from the neighbor. Sure did. And you didn't hear it on the Facebook. You didn't sure see it did. on the uh, TikTok or all this other stuff. Amen. <laughs> you didn't know nothing about it because nobody told nothing like that. Right. They didn't talk about you like that. Good old, good old day. Good old day. But we done got a little bit more educated and sedated and pretty and all this stuff. Now ain't no ugly people in the world. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all okay, ain't nobody gonna say amen. Come get one. You can buy, you can buy hell. You can buy look. You can buy all this stuff now to make yourself look like somebody. Y'all know okay. I'm too much. Yeah, but but life is good. I want you to smile this morning. Amen. Because God has been good to us. Yes, yes. yes, That's what I'm telling you, that God has brought from a long way. Yes, yes. You walk and look around, people used to call people ugly. You don't call them out ugly. Look how they got all this stuff to fix themselves up with. Amen. Come on, Pastor Tom. You better tell it now. I'm just telling you the truth. God has brought us a long way. Amen. Yeah. And we should we be rejoicing about that. Amen. There's nothing wrong with you spending your money, you laboring and buying. But I'm saying we should get so caught up. So we forget yes. our source. Yes. That we don't spend time with him. Right. If you love your spouse, if you love your friend, you don't do things to hurt them. Amen. You spend time with them. Yes. So God needs us to spend time with him. Yes. Do y'all hear me? Amen. What relationship you got with a man or a woman and he can't spend no time with you? Amen. And you call that love a love affair. Uh -huh. That's what I'm talking about with Father God. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't never spend no time with him. But you say you love him. Right. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Something wrong with that. You got to be first. Yeah. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. He's going to let us go out and have a good time today and do all this other stuff. But first, seek ye the kingdom and all of his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Seek first what the kingdom is. And all this other stuff will be added. God don't mind you having material things. He don't want them to have you. Amen. Do y'all hear me? I love nice things, me and the woman of God. We both. Yes. And my baby, that's right. She loves yes. nice things. <laughs> but she work labor. We labor. Yes. Do y'all hear me? Amen. And we give back to the house of God. Amen. Too, Amen. Because we realize our source. Yes. I don't got way like that. Amen. That was okay, okay. ain't part of the money. But guess what? We're going to go on in the prayer. Amen. Right there where we are. Amen. Because we want God to heal us this morning Amen. from this worldly mindset. Yes. Yes. We want a transformation. We want to be transformed yes. back to him. Yes. Through our first belief. You know how you first got saved, how you cried? Yes. I don't know if you ever been really saved before. When I first got saved, I cried for weeks. Yes. I thought something was wrong with me. I called a preacher up that, that, that would work with me. I said, What's wrong with me? I can't stop crying. He said, God is cleansing. Yes. Getting you ready to be used. Yes. Thank you. Now, being in the church, pastor, I know that that was in my mind. Because I was a nightclub woman. Do y'all hear me? Yes. You don't know what God got in store for you. Amen. If you allow him to use you right. early. Do you hear me? Yes. Oh, don't yes. get caught up with what people feel about you, what they yes. say about you. Yes. Yes. Do y'all hear me? Yes. They're going to talk about They're talking about Jesus. Amen. Come on now. So we're ready to come to the altar and pray right now. The altar is open, so we're going to give God. Everybody victorious in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Each child. Yes.
to keep by hand. I've got a God to glorify. I've got a never dying soul to save and fear for the sky. And to serve my present name, I've got a calling to fulfill. And may all of my powers engage that I do my master's will. Say all of
glory to God. Oh, you have to remember that sometimes. Because sometimes we get weary in wrong doing. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get tired of doing what's right. So every now and then you got to respect that all your help comes from God. Hallelujah. He'll keep you in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on me. Amen. That's why we got to keep on talking about him. Got to keep on singing about him. Amen. So we can stay encouraged. Amen. To keep on doing what's right. Amen. And I want you to know it's always a good time to do right. Amen. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. It's always a good time for you to do what's right. Amen. Amen. So we've got four to do. Will you stand and welcome Dr. Adrian Salter? Your mercy, oh God, cannot be compared to anything that we know. We thank you for your the birth, your son, oh God. We just give your name praise and thank you for the word, amen, that shall be released in this place. We pray, God, for that we would decrease, that you might increase, that the word would speak, oh God, and that it shall not return void, but it shall accomplish the purpose for which you sent it. Father, we thank you, and for this, we give your name the glory. All honor, all glory belongs to you. We take no credit for what you are doing right here in the midst of us. For that, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have your seats. Glory to God. Amen. Go with me quickly to the book of Luke, chapter number two. Amen. The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter number two. Glory to God. Gospel of St. Luke, chapter number 2, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 20. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace 
goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. This birth it's like no other birth. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And as we've been saying, this birth of this child mm -hmm. cannot be compared to any other child. Yes. The birth of Jesus mm -hmm. cannot be compared to Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. The birth of Jesus mm -hmm. cannot be compared to any other person that has been born. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Any other man was born and died without much fanfare. Right. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And I can tell you of a truth according to the scripture that the Savior was not born in Sandersville, Georgia. <laughs> which is the birthplace of Elijah Muhammad. Glory to God. The Savior was not born in Chicago, Illinois which is the birthplace of Ben Carter, later known as Ami Ben Israel, the founder of the Black Hebrew Lights. The savior of mankind was born in Bethlehem, according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It was foretold some seven or 800 years prior to the birth, the prophet spoke and said that a savior would be born. Glory to God. I believe it was Isaiah that says that therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Uh, that a virgin would conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Glory to God. This birth is like no other birth. Glory to God. The prophets of old spake and let us know 700, 800 years beforehand that we could expect there to be this birth. That with this birth, there would have to be miracles that surround this birth. Uh -huh. And that the number one miracle would be that a virgin would conceive. Uh -huh. Glory to God. And you and I know that that's impossible uh -huh. with men. Amen. And even Mary, when Gabriel told her that she was going to conceive, she asked the question. She said, how can this thing be, seeing that I know not a man? Huh? That as a virgin, I've never been touched by a man. And in that day, had never been kissed by a man. So she said, I need to understand this kind of science. How that I'm going to conceive anything right. without the help of a man. <laughs> so this birth would be produced by God. Amen. And the angel told her, you don't have to worry about it because with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. Hallelujah. That the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Right. And the power of the Almighty shall overshadow you. Yeah. Glory to God. And with that, you will be found with child. Amen. And that you're going to bear a son. Yes. And that this son will not be named after anybody in your bloodline. Yes. That this son would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. That for the first time, God will visit us in a way that he had never done before. That God would wrap himself in flesh. That God would present unto us the Father because that's, we, that's how we know the Father now is through Jesus. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Glory to God. 
It's impossible for us to know God unless he reveals himself to us. Yeah. Amen. I was just thinking the other day as I, as I was riding in my car, it is really impossible for us to fathom who God is. Right. Huh. It's impossible for us to truly know God unless he reveals himself to us. Yes. It's hard to conceptualize him. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. So God then, in his divine plan, sent his son Jesus. Mm. Glory to God. You, in the beginning of this birth, there was angelic visitations. Amen. Gabriel, the messenger angel. Amen. Went to visit Mary and went to visit Joseph so that they would know to come into agreement with God's plan. Yes. Hallelujah to God. Yes. And so the scripture says now that we know the story. I went through some of this uh, on last week and the week before. Amen. How that that uh, that Jesus, uh, while she was pregnant with Jesus, right. amen, she came up under attack from uh, Herod. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. And, and God warned Joseph in a dream that Herod would seek to kill the child. Yes. And so with that, uh, uh, Joseph took Mary and they went down into Egypt, fulfilling the scripture. Right. Amen. That's because right. the Bible uh, prophesied that the Messiah had to come up out of Egypt. Right. Amen. And so he goes down into Egypt and then he gets word from the angel that the people that are seeking the child's life is dead, you can return now. And so the Bible says that Joseph goes back towards Bethlehem, but when he gets near, he hears that his son, the son of Herod, is ruling in his stead, so he turns aside into Galilee. Again, fulfilling the scriptures, because the Bible says that he shall be called the Galilean. Hallelujah. So we know the, the, the Savior, amen, the Messiah had to come up out of Egypt. Glory to God, had to some kind of way be affiliated with Galilee so that he could be called a Galilean. But then with all of that, he couldn't be born in Galilee. Glory to God, he had to be born in Bethlehem. So with that, we pick up Luke chapter number two. And it says that at this particular time, look at God. God is amazing. Yeah. It's something about God when God do miraculous things. He put things um, in place yeah. right in the nick of time. Right. He orchestrated in a way that you know it had to be God. Yeah. Amen. He do things in a certain way, in a certain day, in a certain time frame so that nobody can take the credit but him. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that it was in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar's Augustus that everybody is to be taxed. Yes. Now, this was the timing of God because God had to have a way to send them back to Bethlehem. And so the Bible says that because they had to pay taxes. Y'all didn't know that paying taxes was in the will of God, did you? <laughs> Some of y'all don't believe tithing in the will of God either. Amen. You think that you're only supposed to be saved until they get to your pocketbook. Oh, that's another message for another day. Glory to God. Uh-huh. But the Bible says here that he sent out word, amen, Caesar's Augustus did that everybody's going to pay taxes. Amen. Amen, believers. It's all right for y'all to pay taxes. Guess what? We pay taxes. Amen. That's a whole nice I saved that one for y'all for January when y'all start filling out them tax forms. <laughs> Amen. So they went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. So the scripture said then Joseph then had to come up out of Galilee because he couldn't pay taxes there. Amen. He came up out of Galilee and then he went back to Bethlehem to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife. But by this time, she was great with child. Yeah. It was time. And women, y'all know what that time is like. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When you're waddling everywhere you go <laughs> with the duck walk. Amen. Because you're so great with child. Right. It was time for the birth. The Bible says that while she was there, then guess what? The time was at hand. Yeah. It was time for the birth. 
Amen. Amen. They go up to pay taxes. Amen. This wasn't in their plan. Amen. Because she tried, they tried to pay taxes and get back home. Because it's like, we don't know when this baby gonna drop. Amen. But while they are there, the scripture says the time came. Amen. For her to be delivered. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost know that yes, you in the place. This is the place. This is the right time. Amen. Sometimes our timing is not his time. Amen. Sometimes he inconveniences us. Amen. Sometimes he puts us in places that we think that we should not be. And cause things to happen that we think shouldn't happen. Amen. But if we just stay with God, we'll realize that it's the plan of God the whole time. Amen. To accomplish his will. Amen. So the Bible says that while she was there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And because they couldn't find no hotel room, because everybody's there right. in this season, everybody coming for the same reason, there is no space for them. The Bible says, guess what? They got to find the best place they could. That's right. And Joseph said, listen, baby, we can't go to no hotel. I can't make it comfortable. I can't do nothing like that. The best I can do is this farm area. Yeah. Glory right. to God. Right. And yeah. she gives birth to Jesus around a bunch of animals. And as a woman, I can't imagine a worse place to have to deliver a baby with a bunch of animals, bad and sheep and all this kind of stuff going on. And then after she gives the birth, because they are truly unprepared, she just finds some cloth to swaddle him in, to wrap him up tight. Glory to God. Uh, and then the Bible says that they found this animal trough. That's what a manger is. It's an animal trough. It's the pee feeding trough. Amen. It's the place where the animals feed. Glory to God. Amen. And they didn't have any place for him. They didn't have no bed for him. So they just laid him in a feeding trough. That's the manger. Uh-huh. See, y'all thought it was something cute, didn't you? Y'all thought it was a baby crib. Not with no baby crib. Glory to God. Amen. It was a feeding trough where you feed the horses. Amen. Or you feed the, the whatever that it was, sheep or whatever, a feeding trough that they laid Jesus in. Glory to God. And while all of this is going on, and I can just imagine um, if we weren't in the will of God, that in your spirit you might be depressed about this situation. That I'm just having my firstborn child. And this is where I got to have my firstborn child in a barn and putting my child in a feeding trough. Glory to God. But the Bible says that while they were doing this, that the angels of God were still busy. And that nearby in the same area, there were some shepherds that didn't have no idea that Jesus was in town. Didn't have no idea that Mary and Joseph was there. But the angel of God showed up and said to shepherds that were there feeding their own sheep, minding their own business, just on their job doing their business. Some of y'all think your job ain't God's business. Hmm? But God will show up on your job. Start talking to you. Start telling you good things. Come on, somebody. Even on your job. Glory to God. Guess what? God showed up on their job. Said, listen. Right here in this city. If y'all just go on into town, you're going to find a Savior is born. Glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Ah, uh, look at the message of the angels unto common shepherd, common folks on their job. Amen. He said, the, a savior is born this day in the city of David, in the town of Bethlehem. And he said, listen, I'm going to let you know a little secret. If you go looking for him, you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Glory to God. Look at God. He was involved the whole time. Come on, even when your child Heard somebody say, ain't no danger in God's water. No Hallelujah, it don't matter. Sometimes, saints of God, we're not where we want to be. Sometimes our, our situations in our family and our household is not what we want it to be. But guess what? Ain't no danger in God's water. Hallelujah, God. Sometimes God got to take you long to bring you up. Come on, somebody in this place. Hallelujah. 
Sometimes it's in those low places where things get broken in your spirit. Hallelujah. Where you learn how to love like you ain't never loved before. Glory to God. See, before that, sometimes we have boundaries that we put in place when we tell God what it is and what it will not be. And we say, God, I'll take this, but not that. If they cross that line, that's it. It's over. But the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Sometimes we'll step into your life and step on your job and step into your world and let you know ain't no danger in God's war. Yeah. You might be in this thing, but you won't break. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Glory to God. While they were down there celebrating the birth of this child, God was talking to shepherds yeah. in a field. Yeah. What the angel of God doing in a field? talking to shepherds that's tending to their sheep. Yeah. But God was down there announcing to shepherds that a Savior was born this day. Amen. Glory to God. And the Bible says that after the angel of God announced it to them, they looked up in heaven and he was joined by a myriad of angels that just began to praise and glorify God for the birth. Amen. And common shepherd people saw the host of heaven light up the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. And they said after they saw that, they said, oh, we got to go see this. Yeah. Amen. So they left their job and went to go find Jesus. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. They went to go see what the angels were talking about. And the Bible says they went and they found him. Yeah. Just like he said. And they knew it was Jesus because there were no other babies in no manger. It was no other babies lying in no feeding trough. It was no other baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a feeding trough in a stable. They said, oh, this the one. Glory to God. And they got there and began to glorify God. Hallelujah to God. Look at all this angelic activity happening around the birth of Jesus. Glory to God. He said, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The angel of God announced that this Jesus that's being born, that's why we don't have to wonder, because the angels told us this is the one. Amen. This is Emmanuel. This is the Savior. Glory to God. This is Christ the Lord. The angel was announcing to men that this is the Messiah. Glory to God. That's why we don't have to wonder. That's why it's recorded in the text. That's why we can look at the text and know that this verse is this verse is the fulfillment of the prophetic. Amen. The fulfillment of Isaiah. The fulfillment of Hosea. We know that this is the one. And the angels confirmed it. Amen. That this Jesus is the one. You don't have to look. Another. Look at somebody say, don't look for another. Don't look for another. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is the one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the angels begin to praise God and say, glory to God in the heights. And on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. Look at this good announcement. Glory to God. The angels didn't come uh, with a bad, sad message. But they came with a good message. That's why it's called the good news. Glory to God. That on earth, God is sending peace to the earth. Amen. And we need that message. Amen. Because as we look around, all we see is the threat of war and the threat of danger. But there is a message from God. And the message is glory to God in the highest. Because on earth, there shall be peace and goodwill toward men. Glory to God. Isaiah let us know that this seed that is born, amen, that he will reign, amen, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Glory to God. And we need to know that's a good message. Amen. We need to know it because as we look at government, we see the flaws. Amen. We see the imperfections. We see that even in a democracy, it's hard to have peace on earth. Come on now. But the Bible lets us know. That this birth of Jesus shall present peace. Amen. And that when he reigns, when he comes back in the second.
and come and guess what? We don't have to worry about it because he's coming back to initiate peace on earth. Amen. And put down all rebellion. Amen. And that when he reigns, the government of the entire world shall be upon his shoulder. Yes. And it shall be a reign of peace. Yes. There shall be no war. That's why we sing that, that song, we shall study war no more. Yes. There shall be no war. Amen. Amen. Because the prince of peace shall rule. Amen. Glory to God. And so this birth then is the initiation of the peace on earth. Amen. The goodwill that God has toward all mankind. That any man, amen, that's why the scripture says, whosoever will, let him come. Amen. Let him drink of the water of life freely. Whosoever will, anybody that want to be saved can be saved. If they believe on Jesus. Amen. But there is salvation in no other. Let me say that. There is no other name given among men whereby we can be saved. Only in the name of Jesus. We have to preach that these days because you got black folks particularly that want to believe in everything but Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. But this is the Savior that we believe on. Amen. This is the birth that we celebrate. This is the birth that we look to. Hallelujah. And it's not about a particular day because we know that December 25th may or may not be the best. That's insignificant. Amen. Amen. We're not worried about that. We are just celebrating the fact that he was born. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. That the angel said that unto us a child is born. Yeah. A son is given. Yeah. That's what we're celebrating. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We just take this time of the year to celebrate it. That's right. Amen. We got to take some time to whatever day you want to. But guess what? We're going to celebrate the fact that the Savior is born. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. The king found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Yeah. Glory to God. The Bible says that Mary pondered these things in her heart. Because uh -huh. you can just imagine being the mother of this child. Lord, have mercy. And this is her first one, too. Lord, have mercy. All of this angelic activity around this birth. Glory to God. And the Bible says that the shepherds returned after they found the child. They returned and they glorified God and they continued praising God. And they continued to, look at this, spread the message of the birth. They continued to witness and evangelize and talk about this birth. Glory to God. And then the Bible says, as you continue to read the text, that God uh, had two other witnesses concerning this birth. That there were, uh, uh, there were two in the temple. Amen. One by the name of Simeon and another by the name of Anna. Simeon, Simeon was an elderly man. And the scripture says that it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not taste death. He should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. That it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that you cannot even die until you see the Messiah. Come on somebody in this place. And the Bible says that after Jesus was born, they took him into the temple. And that Simeon by the Holy Ghost was led. The Holy Ghost let him know, go and check it out. This is the one they took him to be, to be circumcised the eighth day according to the Old Testament scripture and when they did, Simeon heard from the Holy Ghost, he's here. He's here. The Bible says he came out and he lifts the child up and he began to prophesy. Yeah. Glory to God about this birth. He said, oh, this is the one. He said, this is the one I've been waiting on. He said, Lord, you can go and take me now. You can go and let me come on the glory now because now Come on, somebody in this place. The Bible said he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. That God will hold up somebody's death until Jesus arrives. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That death would flee from a man. Come on, somebody in this place. And God said by the Holy Ghost, you can't even taste death. I don't care how sick you are. I don't care what kind of ailments you got because he was an elderly man by now. Amen. 
He's serving God in the temple. Ah, yeah. oh, but the Bible says, guess what? It don't matter about his ailments. He couldn't go. Yeah. Come on, somebody in this place. What a miraculous thing this is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He saw the Lord's Christ. He picked him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now I'm ready to come on home. I've seen the Lord's Christ. Glory to God. And the Bible says that while he was blessing God, there was another uh, uh, 84 year old woman in the temple. Anna the prophetess. Amen. She came on out. The Bible says that she didn't even go home. Amen. That she was there in the temple serving God night and day with prayer and fasting. Serving the Lord. And that when she heard uh, 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 Simeon prophesying, she came out and started prophesying. Glory to God. And confirming the word. Come on, somebody in this place. By the thing in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. Amen. Glory to God. And it was established, amen, that this was the birth of all births. This was the birth that they were looking for, that you and I are looking for, that a Savior is born, and that this birth is significant like no other birth. Amen. That this Savior was born to separate men from their sins. That this Savior was born to bring peace on earth and goodwill toward men. That this Savior was born to deliver us from our enemies. Glory to God. And I want you to know that when we say our enemies, I ain't talking about people so much as the enemy of sin and the enemy of death. Come on, somebody. And death really means to be separated from God. Amen. So Jesus came to deliver us from the ultimate enemies. Right. Amen. The enemy of sin and the enemy of death. Amen. And one thing I'm going to mention before I close is that as we encounter people um, that have all these different religions, uh, one of the things that they can never answer, on, amen, man. is about the problem of sin. Amen. For some reason, they can believe all kind of stuff, but it has no bearing on the sin factor. Yeah. Amen. We were talking, uh, speaking with somebody that's, you know, into the Hebrew, uh, black Hebrew-like thing, and they were referring to their bloodline. Amen. And saying that they were saved by their bloodline. Uh-huh. And so the question then is, if you are saved by your bloodline, how does that separate you from your sin? Because God is a holy God. God is a righteous God. Amen. And for you to be in the presence of God, you got to deal with the sin factor. Glory to God. Uh, but the Bible lets us know, for unto us a child is born. A son is given. Uh, glory to God. And that son is the payment for sin. Hallelujah. That's why we that believe on Jesus, there is a transference that occur. Amen. When we believe on him and we give him our life, and guess what? If he take our sin, amen, and he separate us from our sin as far as the east is from the west. Amen. And when he separate us from our sin, it makes us holy before God. And now we can stand in the presence of God because we are not standing in our own flesh and blood, but we're standing on the blood of Jesus. And through that blood, we're saved. Amen. Amen. When you talk to anybody else in any other religion, they can never answer the question. Right. What about the sin factor? Because yes. all of us know that we were born in the sin. Yes. We know that for a fact. Yes. And all of us know for a fact that God is holy. Yes. Amen. So how is it that mankind is saved? Yes. Unto us a child is born. Yes. A son is given. Yes. And it's through that child that salvation came into the world. Amen. And that salvation now was available yes. to every last one of us. Standing on your feet, thanks. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot be saved through a bloodline. Amen. Glory to God. When we study the scriptures, saints, I could take you through so much to show you how that this Jesus fulfilled the prophetic words that were spoken of hundreds of years ago. God gave us that 
prophecy so that we can know for a fact who the real Savior is. Now I can tell you that he wasn't born in Sandersville, Georgia. <laughs> I can tell you for a fact he wasn't born in Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> the Savior was born in Bethlehem. Glory to God. And there were so many other scriptures that the Messiah had to fulfill. And Jesus Christ is the only one that fulfilled all of the scriptures. This is how we know in whom we believe. We don't have to guess. We don't believe in fairy tales and fables. Amen. But the word is recorded. Amen. So that we can know for a fact that he is the one. Angels announce the birth and let us know that he's here. Hallelujah. And to us, a child is born. A son is given. So now salvation is available to every last one of you. You don't have to be lost. Amen. He came that you can be found. Amen. And I want you to know that God cares about common people. Common people. Amen. People that have jobs, God cares. He revealed himself to shepherds that had jobs. Right. Amen. Not to the wealthy, not to the rich, right. but he revealed himself to common everyday people. Yeah. Did that to let us know that God cares right. about you. You that think that you are the least, God cares. Yes, he does. Amen. And he's available to you. Amen. Every head down, every eye closed. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord, or if you need to be saved, this is your time to accept him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you want to be saved, just lift your hands right where you are. If you want to be saved, lift your hands right where you are. Glory to God. We're going to pray with you. Hallelujah. Come. Amen. Just come briefly. We're going to pray with you. Amen. Don't be afraid. We're not going to embarrass you. 